I like to mix just because I know how I want it to sound. I've got a vision for it. Um, I'm not super comfortable with sending it off somewhere else. We haven't been part of the experience to mix. I know that that happens a lot these days. Um, I wouldn't rule it out completely in the future. Maybe there'll be a time where I think, you know, maybe it's good to get a different perspective. But so far, I pretty much mix everything. Um, but from the engineering side, I like to have an engineer there. I can engineer myself, but it's nice to have someone supporting. And I've got a guy called Mike Spink and a guy called Jonathan Gilmore. And one's really technical, one's really uh, great ears and artistic with engineering. They bounce off each other really well. And we get on great as a three-way team. So um, I keep those guys in the studio as whenever I'm making a record, just purely because it's great for the vibe as well. You know, it just makes the part of the team. It's good. I, I do separate it. Yeah, um, I don't want to be think. I don't want to be thinking too much about um, mixing when I'm recording because obviously the aim of the recording is to make the multi-track as good as possible to the point where the mix is just the nice easy bit, just to bring it all together. But um, it's nice to have a break before you mix as well, just to get some headspace not listen for a while, not be so zoomed, zoomed in to all the individual parts and then try and get a big picture of perspective. I guess that's the difference between the two things. One's details and everything fitting together and keeping an eye on the big picture and then the mixing's just the big picture, making it work and making it nothing breaks the spell. You know, I think that's when you've got a good mix, when you can play it through and there's nothing that makes you, oh, what happened there? Or, you know, just a great. Um, balance of everything and just powerful and exciting and all those good words that you want in a mix. <laughs>